Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Headlines. I'm your host, Jay, and this is The Objective. I just want to thank you for tuning in. Today, we are airing the 10th episode of Let's Talk Headlines. If you haven't seen the previous ones, folks, I implore you to check it out either on my SoundCloud, um, which is www.soundcloud.com forward slash The Objective Podcast, or you can head over to YouTube and uh, search for our channel, The Objective Podcast. Things are really starting to heat up in Washington. And today I want to go over with you two particular topics. The first one is concerning uh, the confirmation of Neil Gorsuch. Now, I watched Neil um, as he... Uh, was going through the hearing and as he was being asked questions, I think it's fair for me to say that he is a well-balanced man. Um, He was calm. He was collected, very calculated in the words that he um, selected. um, Very well-spoken, cadenced, professional man and his record speaks to that and it's been quite interesting watching the democrats try to build a case against gorsuch or try to paint him in a way um, that characterizes him as a malicious or a racist man a man that doesn't display or um, demonstrate sound judgment. But his track record speaks for itself. And the more you pay attention and listen to the hearings, listen to his answers, and try to separate politics from the whole issue, that's when you really start to understand that, you know what, the Democrats don't have an argument against this guy. All this is, is the Democrats not wanting President Donald Trump to have his selection for the Supreme Court. And we see that the Democrats have enough to filibuster the confirmation of Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. And they vow to do just that. For the health care bill that uh, President Donald Trump um, was pushing through, there is criticism on both the right and the left. Some There is an argument that states, you know what, what the president has uh, in mind for health care right now is better than what American people have uh, via Obamacare. Others are saying that this is rushed, it's just an extension of Obamacare, it's not fixing the issues, and there's an argument for both sides. But when it comes to this confirmation, we're seeing that this is purely political. The American people are not at the forefront um, of these individuals' minds when wanting to make this decision to filibuster. Now, what this is going to do, it's going to set a precedent and in a way, the Democrats are Democrats are forcing the hand of the Republicans in utilizing the nuclear option. In 2013, uh, the Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid he implemented the nuclear option in a similar instance. This is in November to confirm three of President Barack Obama's judicial nominees to a federal appeals court. So this has the nuclear option has been used. Um, before, but it's never been used um, in the context of a Supreme Court pick. This is purely politically charged. And it's unwise and very emotional. It's basically an emotional response from the Democrats to President Donald Trump winning the election. This You have to understand that when Hillary, Secretary Hillary Clinton lost the presidential election. This caught Democrats 
so offside, so off guard. They, they were in a state of shock for weeks after the election. Weeks. Democrats wanted to change the whole electoral system. They no longer wanted to go on the electoral um, college. They wanted to go with the popular vote. Right now, you're seeing that the Democrats will stop at nothing. No option is off the table when it comes to shutting down President Trump's agenda and his cabinet, his plans for the country. This is why I believe that President Trump was elected. Because the left-wing media is so disconnected from Americans. And this is why they were so shocked that President Donald Trump won. If their goal is to shut down President Trump, they are hurting the country. He is the leader of the United States of America. This division that I know we do see every election is not good for the country. The whole point of a democratic system is that you are able to utilize when it comes to the Senate, when it comes to the House, it's so that you're able to utilize the right wing and the left wing to propel and project America into a better position. But America is so divided ideologically. And every single election, that division grows more and more, becomes more apparent. And this is not good for the country. Because if the precedent is set that the right will always oppose the left just because, and the, the left will always oppose the right just because, the country will be very unstable politically and as a result economically, the country will not flourish. It will literally destroy itself from the inside out. The whole idea of a democratic government is that although there are differences in ideology, there is common ground on which both parties can negotiate and come to some sort of agreement. But it's so politically charged. It's so um, potent right now. The anger, the, uh, the tension, the frustration, the potency, this is all blinding policymakers and politicians from doing what's best for their constituents and for the country. And it is the, the left-wing media and the left-wing uh, politicians, it's their goal to shut down whatever President Donald Trump puts forward and to ensure that he has a rocky go during, during his presidency. We're going to turn over right now to Susan Rice. Some of you may have heard that name recently or have known her from when she was selected as the uh, 24th United States National Security Advisor under former President Barack Obama between 2013 to 2017 currently. If you listen to, if, you, if your primary news source is the left-wing media, chances are you have not um, seen or heard any reports on her in the last couple days. And that's because... New information states that she is the one, Susan Rice, that requested to unmask the names of the Trump transition officials. And it's just crazy that there are more developments, more things are coming out. It's like, uh, like an onion. You just keep on peeling and peeling and new developments and very interesting things are coming out. Controversial things. And then, they, obviously, there are critics, and you, even if you are on the right, you have to acknowledge that Susan Rice may have been within the, 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 the realm of her abilities and capabilities and authority to request to have these names unmasked. Now, let's just say this. Let's just say for, for, for a minute that Susan Rice, who worked under President Obama, and asked that uh, the names of... Uh, the Trump's transition team be unmasked. Let's just say that this is not a political issue at all. I begin to wonder how did these unmasked 
classified names and information. How did the media, the left-wing media, get a hold of it? If she's responsible for the unmasking, and I'm sure there'll be more questions as to why these names were unmasked and the procedures that followed. If she's responsible for that, then who is responsible for leaking this information to the media? In turn, who should be responsible for this information being leaked to the media? Folks, this all started with a very controversial tweet that the President of the United States posted on his Twitter. And each and every day, new information emerges. And I was looking on CNN, and I was looking on NBC, and I was looking on MSNBC, and I realized that on the front page of their their, their, their websites, there was no mention of any of this. It's disgusting that when the media does talk about this, it's in defense of Susan Rice and the, the former president's um, administration. It's like whenever something comes out that could possibly vindicate or shed new light um, on this whole surveillance of the president issue, whenever, whenever there's information that, 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 that sheds light or, or, or possibly proves collusion between the Obama administration and the surveillance on the, uh, on the, 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 the current president of the United States. The media is so quick to jump and defend and say, no, she was, she was completely um, within her authorities to ask for this unmasking. Oh, no, she did not leak it. She unmasked it. Why is it that whenever there is information that surfaces, that points the finger of question towards the Obama administration and those involved, why is it that the media is so quick to denounce and negate and decline and deny all of these accusations and all of these questions are shot down and they, they, they refuse to put it on their website as news? They don't know. There is no evidence that there is any collusion between the Russian government and President Donald Trump. There is no evidence that states that there was collusion in regards to the presidential election in the United States. However, CNN and MSNBC and ABC and all these liberal left-wing media news uh, stations, they decide that they're going to put it on their websites. They're going to report it day in, day out, 24 hours news cycle. There is no evidence that states there is collusion. But when evidence comes out, that Susan Rice, who served under Barack Obama as the, the United States National Security Advisor, had asked to unmask the names of the Trump's transition team uh, and officials. And then that information mysteriously is leaked to left-wing media sources. There's silence. My only request to you, whether you are a liberal, whether you are a, 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 a conservative, when you look at the news, I want you to mentally imagine that you are a part of the opposite party. Look, and what I mean by that is look at the news with a critical eye. Don't look don't look at the news to feel comfortable with your beliefs and to, to have information that feeds your narrative. Look at the news with an objective eye. Question. Do research. Do not be a sheep. Thank you so much for listening to me. My only request, folks, is that we all make it our objective to be objective. Have a good night.